Hi guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Medicine PYK Topic Series. The episode six is myasthenia gravis, a very important topic. So let's get started. So first, the PYQ questions, which came in NEET 2021 and 2018. So the first question: A 30-year-old man presented with excessive fatigability towards the end of the day that improved with rest. He also gives a history of ptosis, difficulty in speech, and swallowing. What is the most likely diagnosis? Second question is: Myasthenia gravis is associated with, and they have given four options, and we have to choose basically the mechanism. So let us first quickly go through the topic, and then we'll come back to the answers. Myasthenia gravis it is a autoimmune neuromuscular junction disorder that means the body is attacking its own cell it is characterized by weakness and fatigability of skeletal muscles which is very characteristic and could be the clue in the clinical question now the mechanism the main mechanism is mainly two one is decrease in number of acetylcholine receptors in the post synaptic membrane and number two is acetylcholine cannot bind to the receptors as the autoantibodies which is being produced they are blocking and destroying the receptors as we can see in the picture the left hand side is normal where the receptors are adequate in number acetylcholine is adequately binding and the muscle activation is there but on the right side the auto antibodies are present and the receptors numbers are also reduced hence the acetylcholine is not able to bind adequately to the uh, receptors and hence the muscle activation is inhibited producing all the course of the disease and the symptoms Now coming to the clinical features, uh, these are very important because these will be the clues in the questions, which will give you a hint toward the diagnosis. Generally, female is more involved than males, and uh, it starts with ocular or pharyngeal symptoms, and then goes to generalized weakness, proximal more than distal, and then ultimately involving respiratory muscles, which is often late. In ocular symptoms, the ptosis is one of the most important symptom, and it's often the first presenting symptom. Uh, others are diplopia and ophthalmoplegia. Among the bulbar involvement. fatigable chewing dysarthria dysphagia might be noted in limbs and neck dropped head and proximal weakness more than distal and arms more than legs are noted respiratory involvement where patient may present with breathlessness uh, weak breathing uh, tired breathing and ultimately uh, leading to respiratory failure and patient might end up in ventilator in the icu also myasthenia gravis is commonly associated with other autoimmune diseases like hashimoto thyroiditis Addison's disease, pernicious anemia, vitiligo, and type one diabetes mellitus. Its presentation is bimodal in age. That is, it can present in second to third decade, uh, where females are more commonly affected than males, and it, it can also present uh, in six to seven decade, where almost uh, the incidence is equal. Majority of the population has a thymus pathology. That is about seventy five percent, and sixty five percent of them are. having thymic hyperplasia and 10% is having thymoma and certain genetic association which could be the mcqs uh, are hla dr3 dr9 and b8 now the types there are mainly two types of myasthenia gravis one is sero positive myasthenia gravis one is sero negative myasthenia gravis in the sero positive one the most specific antibody is positive that is anti acetylcholine receptor antibody in sero negative one the other antibodies are present like anti mask antibody muscle specific kinase anti lipoprotein receptor 4 antibody that is anti lrp4 and anti striated muscle antibody these are present in sero negative myasthenia gravis where anti acetylcholine receptor antibody is absent now uh, based on the involvement uh, one is ocular myasthenia one is generalized myasthenia ocular myasthenia where particularly only ocular symptoms are present and uh, other symptoms are generally absent it is also present in 50% sero positive cases and anti mask antibody may be positive in ocular myasthenia in generalized myasthenia 80 to 90% cases are sero positive cases now coming to diagnosis this particular part of the video you can keep a screenshot and save it because it has many potential questions uh, first the antibodies which we just discussed associated myasthenia gravis are the anti acetylcholine receptor antibody anti mask antibody anti lrp4 antibody then the eye spec test which is a bedside clinical test where application of eye spec over the eyes improves the ptosis now why because it decreases the activity of acetylcholine esterase which is hydrolyzing the acetylcholine ultimately increasing the amount of acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft and increasing the transmission again a similar test edrophonium chloride or tensilon test again a potential mcq where again improvement of symptoms is noted on injecting edrophonium because it is an anti acetylcholine esterase inhibitor again inhibiting the hydrolysis and amount of ach increases and transmission increases so these are two uh, tests which are done 
and uh, if symptoms are improved uh, it points more towards myasthenia gravis the fourth one repetitive nerve stimulation test what you just need to know it shows a decremental response in myasthenia gravis single nerve fiber electromyography it shows a increased jittering response so these are certain tests which are done uh, to come to a diagnosis for uh, myasthenia and uh, certain other tests like uh, detection of other autoantibodies for the other diseases and a ct scan to uh, find out a thymoma are certain other tests which can be done but these are the main basic tests which needs to be done and you should be aware of which could be potential mcqs now coming to the treatment anticholine esterase drugs like pyridostigmine can be used thymectomy can be done uh, indications for thymectomy is important like thymoma associated with hypogamma globulinemia and acetylcholine receptor antibody positive cases and generalized myasthenia gravis with a age group of 18 to 65 years of age these are indications of thymectomy and patient is benefited cases where anti mask antibody is positive they are elderly and they are only ocular myasthenia gravis thymectomy is not indicated as it is not much beneficial for the patient then the immunosuppression therapy definitely uh, the treatment for uh, autoimmune diseases uh, where steroids uh, azathioprine tacrolimus and rituximab are certain options and plasma pheresis and ivig that is intravenous immunoglobulin uh, is also another treatment option now let us go back to the question so the first question a 30 year old man presented with excessive fatigability towards the end of the day that improved with rest he also gives a history of ptosis difficulty in speech and swallowing what is the most likely diagnosis now if you see they have given one generalized symptom that is the excessive fatigability and they have also given a ocular symptom ptosis and a bulbar symptom that is difficulty in speech and swallowing now these all symptoms are typical of myasthenia gravis so the answer is clearly myasthenia gravis uh second question is myasthenia gravis is associated with now they have given four options where we need to find out the mechanism which is associated with myasthenia gravis so option a decrease acetylcholine release in the nerve endings number b decrease myosin number c absence of troponin c and number d decrease synaptic transmission at the myoneural junction now we know that there is no problem with the acetylcholine release also there are no problems with the skeletal muscle proteins so the option d looks the right answer where there is decreased synaptic transmission at the myoneural junction because ultimately the acetylcholine not able to bind to the receptors because of the autoantibodies which is blocking them and destroying them i hope this video was useful and you had a quick revision of the topic myasthenia gravis and the potential important questions for the neat pg till then keep studying keep revising and i'll see you in the next episode cheers